It's fine. All right, we'll go back to <laughs> being since one o'clock. We'll call the Clinton County Board of Commissioners meeting in order. I uh, note for the record that all three commissioners are present, and we will start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, and I didn't even have my mic on. Losing it today. Mr. Chairman, I would make a motion to approve the business agenda as presented. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the business agenda. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving the business agenda say aye. 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 Motion passes. Enter. Let's try that. Um, somebody want to move the commissioner meeting minutes? Mr. Chairman, I would make a motion to approve the commissioner meeting minutes from April 4th, 2023 and April 11th, 2023. And I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the commissioner meeting minutes for April 4th and April 11th of 2023. Any discussion on those? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. Uh, brings us to citizen comment. Uh, if any citizen has any comments that pertains to county business uh, or anything residing inside the county uh, and want to make the commissioners aware of it, uh, this is your chance. You'll be given three minutes. Please give your name and general location for the record uh, at the start of your testimony. Um, and uh, anybody in the room want to do citizen comments? Seeing none. Um, so let's go online. Does anybody online have a citizen comment? Please raise your hand or unmute yourself. Um, this is citizen comment pertaining to anything that's not currently on our agenda, like public hearings and whatnot. Um, so, okay, I see a hand up from Culture Seed. Go ahead. Can't. There we go, I think. Can you hear me? Yes, now we can. Go ahead. Perfect. All right. Thank you. Um, Yesenia Castro from Culture Seed, um, one of the co-executive directors here at Culture Seed, located in White Salmon. Uh, Culture Seed, for those of you that don't know, is a small nonprofit whose work focuses in Western Calicutat and Skamania counties. We offer free and ongoing outdoor immersion and mental health services to underserved youth. We start our programming at age 14 and then continue to offer services through high school and beyond. We serve youth who have multiple barriers to getting their needs met. Culture Seed currently is addressing systemic inequities and decentralizing and destigmatizing mental health so that it is more widely understood and cared for. We are currently co connecting youth to a wide range of mental health resources as well, as well as tackling rural isolation that has been worsened by COVID-19. We focus on increasing outdoor access um, in the gorge and diversifying the outdoors and the outdoor economy. Um, our services, again, are free and we do not have to bill insurance. So our team depends and works hard to get grants and partner with folks who have funds for mental health. We host community fundraisers and do all of the things that we can to, to, to keep our services free. We currently have a longstanding partnership with the White Salmon Valley School District that has allowed us to use their space for youth therapy in groups and to recruit for our programs. We also have been partnering with Klickitat Health Department who has been letting us reserve their conference room for free. Um, we really uh, focus on our mental health services following the person and not the location, which has often resulted in our options being limited to sometimes going on a walk on cold, cold rainy days. Um, and our brave youth deserve more than that. So today I am on here to request support in acquiring a centralized location that is easy to access, a space that our youth can come to in White Salmon. We would ideally share the space with partners in mental health. This includes um, our county crisis team, a recovery cafe, ESD 112, Skyline Hospital, North Shore, or any private um, therapists and friends across the river as well. We are requesting a space or wanting to be creative about in, uh, imagining a welcoming space where anybody from our community can walk in and, and have their needs met. 
Um, I'm also happy to meet with anybody and share more about Culture Seeds work and the vision that we have. Um, so yeah, that's it. Supporting, supporting and looking for space and creative partners to help us find space because right now we don't have one. All right. Does that conclude your comment, ma'am? I'm gonna take that as a yes. If she muted herself, um, as I think you're you're new to the Board of County Commissioners, the Board of County Commissioners usually reserves time uh, to address citizen comments at the end of the citizen comment period, which is usually around 120, 125. So if you're looking for comments back, um, hold on the line and you may or may not get them at 120, 125. Um, with that, we'll go back online. Oh, we do have a hand in the room. I figured I would just eyeball up there before I go back online each time. So uh, are the little green buttons lit up there? Perfect. Yep. Name and general location for the record. Uh, Kathy Moko Goldendale. I would like to commend the commissioners and the sheriff's office for giving us such a safe, good place to live in the state of Washington. Um, we don't have to worry about going out of our house or going to the store, or going out at night. Um, a friend today said, well, we went away for a week and my husband forgot to lock the front door. And it happened, you know. Uh, some examples. My granddaughter went out in Seattle the other night, a couple nights ago, from 8 to 10, parked one of the other friend's mother's car, and the car was broke, smashed and broken into. My sister lives in Seattle, goes to the store in a nice area. Everything in the store is behind a lock and key. Oh. And if you wanna buy some shrimp, the man comes over and <laughs> opens it and gives it to you because people steal everything, you know? And that's why we are so lucky here that we have uh, a sheriff's office and police and everybody that doesn't let things like that happen. Anyway, thank you. Good comment. Thank you, Ms. Moko. Okay, we'll go back online. I see Ruby with a hand up. Name and general location for the record, please. Ruby Irby, uh, happily a resident of Goldendale, Washington. And I just want to take a moment to point out that the discussion earlier with Republic Services really highlights the uh, the importance of having a solid waste manager to discuss, um, you know, having tonnage amounts taken off. Um, the discussion of a dollar fifty per ton off for a contract would have already been vetted and the research of necessity done long before the eleventh hour, which is kind of where you guys are at. So. Um, I think your HR director is a great guy, but I don't think that he's qualified in order to direct you guys in the right direction um, when these matters come up. So hopefully you take a few minutes before you make that decision today so that you can make it with an educated um, decision. And, uh, and that's all I got. And I can't stay on until the end. So I'm going to go and I hope you guys do good work. Thank you, Ms. Irving. Um, she can't stay on. Does anybody want to answer now? I mean, granted, we are very limited on what we can answer you. So take that in mind if anybody wants to answer now. Yeah. Thank you for your okay. comment, Ms. Irving. Thank you for your comment. And I guess you'll just have to see the commissioner's directions or what they're thinking later since we can't really disclose right now. Uh, but let, let's just put it this way. We feel your concerns. Um, all right, next up online. Anybody else online have your hand up? Unmute yourself. Um, wave at us. Start talking something. I do not see the regular cease people on because they're out probably doing their tour. So there should be a lot of citizen comment time available for anybody out there that wants it. I have to just start randomly picking out names. Go 
granted 95% of them are county employees. Okay, we will just uh, go about our business and start signing paperwork and whatnot. And if you have a citizen comment, please raise your hand um, or uh, get our attention somehow. Um, and we will address you. I guess I probably shouldn't hum with my mic on, huh? Time sheets. We keep having riveting public comment like this. We're going to bore you away from us, huh? <laughs> we'll lose our burn. That's the way it used to be. I, I used to sit in this room every week, and it was just me and staff. There was no Zoom. And yeah, you're three minutes, but then you got 27 minutes of nothing to talk about. And it used to just be conversations back and forth. And sometimes it was rather entertaining. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> No, back then it was boring. Back then it was just standard boring. But then when Zoom showed up, then it got entertaining. Well, and now it limits it. So technically, if I give you three minutes and I give them three minutes and then I give you three more minutes, I got to give them back three more minutes because you got to keep everybody fair and equal down the board. Otherwise, you're taking somebody's First Amendment right away. So then it leaves all this dead air time because of that. So we are still in citizen comment. If any members of the public online would like to give citizen comment to the Clickstick County Board of Commissioners, now is your chance. Unmute yourself, raise your hand. What are they? Cat cats? Just hanging out. 
Goldendale, the fact that you only see two and not 40 is a good thing. I know. For my seatmates, I did email back Southwest Washington Home Builders and told them we had a workshop. So. Mm I see a hand up. Ms. Arnold, do you have a citizen comment for us? Yeah. I, um, I think I'd like to suggest that you think of some way to turn this time into more of a conversation and less of a, uh, you know, somebody says something and at the end of the meeting, the commissioners say what they think. There's really, you know, I comment a lot here off and on and in other forms as well and it's unfortunate that it's never a dialogue it's always like okay here's my comment and then okay here's why most of the time like i'd say 95 percent of the time i make a comment what i get back is here's why you're wrong um which isn't very productive and it does not encourage commenting so uh, I understand about having to allow kind of equal time and whatnot, but if you're getting to the point here for this 30 minutes where the volume of comments is down, maybe you could think about some way to have an actual conversation with some of the people who attend instead of the way it's structured now. So that'd be something I just put on your agenda to think about. Thank you, Ms. Arnold, and I can agree with you that I wish we could go back to the old way where it was a conversation. Um, unfortunately, now we have um, sometimes before us an atm atmosphere that's um, combative, to say the least, argumentative, 
Um, and we found when we were doing it the old way of having that conversation um, that we the board lost control very fast. Um, and so that's why it changed. Uh, did it change for the better? Um, for regular folks, the answer is no. Unfortunately, they are, I think, getting punished um, for the actions of the few. But did it um, tone down some of the hostilities um, and some of the out of order um, comments and the gaveling from the chair? Yes, it did. So um, hopefully, uh, we can work towards going back to having conversations um, because that's the thing. When I sat here for two years, we did have conversations. They may have not always listened to what I had to say. Um, so I feel your pain there, um, but at least it was a conversation. Um, so thank you. Any other citizen comments uh, online for the Board of County Commissioners today? Yeah, they said the majority of the commenters, I think, are off on their tour, so I figured today would be kind of slow. Kind of feeling bad. I, I, the, the point that Pat just made about, and most of the time our answers are, and here's why you're wrong, um, I guess I've never felt like that was what I was portraying. If, if you know, that was me, I'm just going to assume everything's me because I can't speak for you guys. Um, but um, just just to let her know that that hit me. Um, so at least I myself will be um, trying to do better to make sure that I'm not answering questions with a make somebody feel like they're wrong in their statement because nobody's ever wrong, even if there's two different opinions. Uh, both opinions are right. They're just different. Um, so if you if we made you feel that way, I, I have to apologize for the board. Uh, with that, we will go on to any other citizen comment in the in the room or online that has comments for the Board of County Commissioners today. Any answers, my seatmates, or comments, or? Might as well use the time productively and if the citizens don't want it. Not that there's a lot of response to give, but do either of you have anything? I would say thank you, Kathy, for the positive statements. Um, we like, love hearing those. Um, and with Ms. Castro and Culture Seed, um, thank you for working with our behavioral and public health department. Um, we are looking for um, that exact thing in the White Salmon area um, for their new behavioral health program as it expands. Um, and I thought that I'd heard that Culture Seed had secured some um, uh, property or some area in the community center or the old, the old, old school in White Salmon. So. Um, I'm going to look more into that because that's we've been looking at that space for quite a different few projects. Um, and with Pat, um, yes, it's not as much of a back and forth as it used to be. Um, and usually we're busy the whole 25 minutes and we don't ha have a whole bunch of extra time. Um, today is, of course, the first most beautiful day of the year. And if I had a choice, I wouldn't be sitting here either, uh, giving public comment. Um, but you do have my phone number and you are welcome to call me anytime um, to have a conversation, um, a back and forth conversation. So thank you as always for taking the time. Um, and just so you know, I received your email uh, that you sent earlier today as well. So, and thank you to all of our commenters. Everything? I don't today. Okay. Jake, 
Jake thanked everybody just as I would have. Okay. Yeah, I agree. Um, and I will point out also, like Jake said, you know, feel free to call or email them anytime. My, my phone and email is always open to anybody out there listening. Um, you know, people I don't even know off the internet, you know, wish I could buy a cup of coffee and pick your brain. All you got to do is email me or call me or set up, do something to set up a time. Uh, and I will go meet with you or your group whenever you want me to. So um, always open and available, just need to know where I'm going. Um, and it sounds like my seatmates are the same way. So we're trying to, we're trying to shift things around in the county. We're trying to be more open. We're trying to be more transparent. We're trying to give the Zoom option um which we no longer are legally allowed to do uh, or ne no longer le legally required to do um we're trying to record them so everybody can watch them later we're trying to be out in the communities more uh, so that people can see us and pick our brains so we're trying and if we're not there yet no we're working on it um with that i think i've already addressed everybody else on the list um and always thanks kathy for her positive comments that help on otherwise dull days or non-bright days. Um, any other citizen comments before we go? We still have a few minutes left. Not seeing any. Yeah, I do know as far as the times like this where it's just dead air, and we've had this conversation in the county as well, a lot of counties do not set aside half an hour for citizen comment. They set aside up to half an hour for citizen comment. So when they call citizen comment and nobody responds, uh, they just close, or when the last person responds, um, they just close citizen comment, move on to their agenda and everything else to continue their productive work schedule. Uh, we are kind of the exception in the in the state that keeps a certain block of time open. Uh, but then again, this county has always provided public comment, even when it wasn't mandated or required by the state. Um, so I think this county has always gone over and above, uh, above and beyond to make sure that they can hear from the public and, and we're trying to do the same. And as you can tell, I'm just killing two minutes of airspace before we can move on, unless one of you wants to come online and give us some citizen comment. Um, I guess while we have a couple minutes, we did receive an email from uh, Ms. Bosquet um, asking us about uh, RCW 367795 and asking, in, asking if we would change um, to include a separate document for our findings of fact. I responded to her um, letting her know that uh, that though what we had written are our findings of fact um, and it says that much and it also says that an emergency exists within the whereas um, and so we've met our statutory obligation just wanted to make sure mm -hmm. you guys knew that i responded back i didn't know if you had yeah i i kind of sent one back that was kind of the same that that kind of just says that we may have a um difference of what difference of opinion of what the findings of fact was uh, or how it needed to be officially done that um, each commissioner gave their findings of fact when we had the moratorium hearing and each listed our reasons for why we were what we were. Um, those are all part of the official record to go along with the official document at the end. Um, I don't know that that will close this case on this issue um but i did answer as well as you with pretty much the same same comments so i hadn't answered her but i did a, a word search a legal word search and findings of fact are your product and the conclusions are your statements out of that product so i think we've covered ourselves with we did 
do our findings of facts, but then our conclusions are conclusion of what came out of those finding of facts. Right. As I said, I think there's just a difference of opinion. They would like to have seen it done uh, with more paperwork and then we did, but um, yeah. Okay, it's 1.30. Uh, time to move on to public hearings, public meetings, and bid openings. Right now we have a public meeting to consider a request for an additional 90-day extension to complete all conditions of an approval of a short plat SPL 2021-11 on parcel number 05-19-0900-0008 backslash 00, which is located in the Golden Day vicinity um, for the DeMonts. Uh, staff update, please. Good afternoon, commissioners. Um, this is a request for an additional 90 day extension to complete all conditions of approval for short plat 2021-11 applicants, John and Ariana DeMont. The Klickitat County Subdivision and Short Plat Ordinance 122082 allows for one year from preliminary approval to submit all conditions required and obtain final approval. An additional one year extension can be granted if requested by the applicant. A provision for any extension beyond that is not included in the above ordinance. The applicant requested and was granted a one year extension by the planning department on March 28, 2022. This extension moved the plat expiration date from April 28, 22 to April 28, 23. The applicant has again asked for an additional extension due to unforeseen complications. If the board finds, feels that an extension is warranted, the board will need to make a motion to grant a 90 day extension, extending the current deadline to July 28, 2023 for short plat SPL 2021-11. Okay, any uh, discussion, questions, or anything by my seatmates? And you took this by the prosecuting attorney's office? No, we have done this before. We have done it in the past. Yes. Okay, yeah. that's... Um, the last one, I think it was due to COVID delays. We don't have it. It doesn't give us an option to, for a ex second extension right. in the ordinance, so we bring it to you to see if you're uh, willing to do that. Yeah. So the first extension is administrative. Yes. Yeah. I have no concerns. I have no concerns. I have no concerns either. I would hate to have them have to apply again and pay all the fees and everything. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I would make a motion uh, to extend um, the uh, approval of short plat SPL 2021-11 um, with the applicants John and Ariana Dumont um, for 90 days. And I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second uh, to ex extend SPL 2021-11 for 90 days. Um, any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of extension, say aye. 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 Motion passes. Here's the resolution for that. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, moving on, we are now going to move into a public hearing to consider the, consider the approval of Shoreline Substantial Development Perlet, Permit and Shoreline Conditional Use Permit uh, SH 2022-03 for the Pitt Trailhead Project on the Click and Chat. Uh, you want to give a brief staff update briefly before we move into the hearing or? Sure, um, I do have a last minute um, Comment from the Friends of the White Salmon River. Do you okay. guys have that? Do you um, I, we did receive it via email. I have had a chance to read it. Um, have my seatmates have a chance to read it? Mm -hmm. I read it. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. We've all had a chance to read it. Thank you. Okay. This shoreline conditional use and substantial development permit proposal, SH 202203, only involves improving the existing pit site trailhead located in the vicinity of Clickitat, Washington at the junction of SR 142 
and Fish On Road. The applicant is Washington State Parks. Conditional uses that are set forth in the local master program may be authorized provided the applicant can demonstrate all of the following per WAC 173-27160. One, the proposed use is consistent with the Shoreline Management Act and the policies of the Klickitat County Shorelines Master Plan. Two, the proposed use will not interfere with the normal public use of public shorelines. Three, the proposed use of the site and design of a project will be compatible with other permitted uses within the area. Four, the proposal will cause no unreasonably adverse effects to shoreline environment designation in which it is to be located. <clears throat> and five, the public interest suffers no substantial detrimental effect. On February 21st, the Planning Commission recommended approval of SH 2022-03. The Board of County Commissioners reviewed the Planning Commission's recommendation during their public meeting on March 21st. The meeting resulted in the Board's decision to have their own hearing in order to further address their concerns regarding how the project affects the public's interest. This is that hearing. As the last step in the local approval process, the board may decide to approve or deny SH 2022-03. The board's decision will then be forwarded to the Department of Ecology for final review and approval. That concludes my staff review. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I guess I probably should have already had the discussion about disclosing ex parte contact, of which I had none. I'm assuming Commissioner Joller is still going to recuse herself from this. Yes. Okay, just for the record. Um, and Commissioner Anderson has not stated he has had any, so we will move on to uh, applicants' additional testimony. Is the applicant or state parks online and wish to give any additional testimony um, to the Board of Commissioners today? No additional, uh, good morning or good afternoon. This is Brian Patno from Washington State Parks. No additional testimony other than the responses to the comments and concerns we heard at the last uh, commissioner meeting um, that we submitted in writing were included with your staff packet. I think everyone, uh, everyone understands what's being proposed. Um, if not, I can go through the, the uh, components or the, the program elements of the uh, of the uh, improvements, whichever uh, you prefer. I, uh, I, we did see the comments in the packet and I do appreciate you addressing the ones that you did address. Um, uh, I would ask my seatmate, I do not need a full update on this and if he needs a full update, uh, we will, or do you not need a full update? I read the, yep. whole, I read the whole packet, yep. Okay. Well, um, let me know if you want me to go through or provide any clarity on uh, the improvements. Um, uh, happy to do that. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, so now we will go on to proponents testimony or anybody looking to testify in favor uh, of placing this project that is not the applicant. Any, any citizens want to uh, go on record as being in favor of this project and provide testimony to the Board of Commissioners. Last call for any citizen uh, proponents that want to go on record as in favor of this um, development. Okay, seeing none, uh, we will go to... Um, Opponents, any opponents testimony, anyone that wants to go on record as opposed to the test or as opposed to this project uh, on the pit trailhead. Okay. I'm seeing none there as well, other than the one on the record that we did receive via email that was more of a neutral. Uh, okay. Uh, no need for Apple. Uh, hello, can you hear me? Yep. Can you hear me? Someone. We do have some. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, I, I had a challenge with my mute. Um, my name is Devin Hawks. I am a property owner on Fishon Road, um, and I would like to make a statement in opposition to this plan. Okay, go ahead, sir. Okay, um, would it be possible to share my screen? 
Um, sure. I'll give, okay, I'll give you should a, have a share a screen button on the bottom that. of your Zoom. Yep. Okay. Can folks see what I'm sharing? I see it said you've shared your screen, but I'm still looking at a Zoom meeting. There's a map. Okay, let me see. There's a map of the park. Okay. Okay. Yep, we have that, cool. sir. Okay, great. So this is your before picture. Um, as you can see, this is mostly a uh, gravel paved area. Um, it has uh, fairly substantial parking there already. Um, in our uh, experience there in the 11, almost 12 years that we've lived there, um, we've never seen that parking area full. The area is uh, fairly flat, um, serves pretty good parking, and uh, does not seem to provide, present any access issues for the current use of the trailhead. So I just want to I want to be clear that um, what we're looking at here is is a um, is a fairly good fit for how the trail is used. This is our proposed plan. As you'll see. This is a large surface area of asphalt that is covering much more than what was previously a, uh, um, a dirt road permeable surface. And as you'll also see, the edge of this development extends right up to the edge of the 50 foot line for where parts is drawn, their uh, observable high water. So this is a big change. This is a big asphalt parking lot on a small parcel. Now in the uh, planning commission meeting, um, parks went at length to, uh, to describe the area that this big parking lot is being put into as disturbed and the Vegetation was characterized as shrubby or stunted Gary Oak. Um, and uh, in Park's estimation, it did not have a substantial impact on the uh, on important habitat in the area. Now I'd like to demonstrate to you folks today that that is not the case, that this actually has a substantial impact on the uh, 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 significant habitat area. Um, now, to start off, I'm going to provide a statement that parks actually made themselves in their SEPA checklist. It says, based on an analysis of the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife's priority habitat and species GIS records. Sir. Oregon, what? Yes, sir. Um, I'm sorry, but our comment is usually three minutes now. Unfortunately, I forgot to tell you that. So you had no idea, uh, no way to know. So with that, I'm going to um, use Chairman's prerogative, give you two more minutes, and then we will also give the um, proponent of this project the same time to rebut. So you have two more minutes, sir. Go ahead. Okay, great. Thank you. I'm sorry about that. Um, okay, so first point is that parks themselves have identified this as uh, Oregon white oak woodland that is Washington State high priority habitat for conservation. Washington Fish and Wildlife has identified this area as habitat for the western gray squirrel. This species is identified as a species of greatest conservation need under the State Wildlife Action Plan. Now, while par parks may have indicated that this area is a disturbed area with little ecological value, you're looking at one of the trees in their tree removal plan. As you can see, that is a very mature, very large oak tree that provides that would provide substantial habitat to the gray squirrel. Um, there are quite a few other trees in the area 
that are similarly large, mature, slow-growing oak trees. And these trees are slated for removal. So Parks is not following through on their commitment to preserve this uh, important habitat for a threatened species. So um, I think that's the gist of my comments here. That spot hasn't been disturbed for over 200 years. There's an oak tree growing there that's older than anyone in this meeting. Um, and for Parks to claim that this is somehow a disturbed area that has little uh, habitat value is not the case. Um, thank you for letting me show these pictures. Um, and I hope you come to the decision that this is not in the public interest of the cat county. Thank you, sir. Your time has ended. That I'm resetting my clock. Um, with that, now is the time for, well, I guess I'll go one more call for opponent's testimony. Anyone wishing to oppone or oppose this project that has citizen comment, please come forward now. Um, or we close citizen comment. Yep. All right, now once again, I'm not seeing none, so we will move on. And now is the time for applicant's rebuttal. Uh, the applicant will have a chance to rebut or clarify any comments or statements made by the general public. Um, sir, this is where I will extend your time for two minutes to be fair and equal with the uh, testimony provided, and you will have five minutes, up to five minutes if you need them. Go ahead. Uh, thanks. Um, thanks for the comments, Devin. Um, the, uh, we are taking out nine trees um nine oak trees to be exact we are do plan to um uh restore uh and renovate the the uh, vegetation on this site er particular areas that are disturbed so we'll be replacing in kind the oaks that are removed um but to uh, to get to the the gist of the concern um uh western gray squirrel uh habitat is priority uh that site is over, I think it's 90 acres. So we're preserving a large um, portion of that. Unfortunately, the development above us um, took out a majority of the oak habitat that had the nests, but we are, um, like I mentioned, we're not required to do that. There are no nests in those trees that we're removing and there are none within, um, I'd have to check the, um, the distance and uh, and with our stewardship, but even even um, I'm not even sure we have any nests on that property. So um, I guess I just want to clarify that um, we are removing trees, but the the vegetation that we replace will um, be better than what is there. It is previously disturbed. It was an old homestead. Um, it's gone feral or I guess that's uh, fallow I should say is the word I'm looking for um, so it's kind of hard to tell and that that big oak um, it is a big one and um, I uh, we showed it um, as being removed because we weren't sure we can save it but I think that we um, probably can um, uh, we're going to try to save it adjust the road a little bit and see if we can move it out um, so we can get that uh, keep that big one because it is a it is a beauty for sure um, so, like I mentioned before, we're doing whatever we can to um, protect and uh, enhance the site. Uh, uh, but unfortunately, in order to get the circulation in there and um, and to improve the look of that corner and the safety um, and provide a few extra parking spots, um, we do have to take out a couple trees. And uh, before I finish, I just want to give Chelsea a couple minutes. Um, Chelsea Harris, our environmental planner, is on the line here too. To make sure I got that right, or if she has any clarifications to what I just uh, stated there. Chelsea. Yeah, you you nailed it, Brian. Um, and just for reference for everyone, Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife has reviewed our proposal, um, and they have provided the necessary reviews and permitting for this project. Um, so everyone is on the same page, and our SEPA checklist certainly reflects um, accurate, on the ground conditions, which is, you know, what, what our responsibility is. So other than that, Brian nailed it right on the head. Thanks, Chelsea. I don't have any further 
comments or rebuttals or clarifications and my my time's up anyway so thank you all okay thank you sir okay with that uh we will call the public portion of this hearing closed um now is the time for the board to ask questions of staff the applicant or others if it has any questions uh, so i would ask if my seatmate has any further questions that he needs no nope. Um, I do not either. Um, now it's time for the board to have discussion before it makes a motion. Um, if it needs discussion or wants discussion. Um, I would ask my seatmate if he has things he would like to discuss or. No, I was, if he's, okay. I was clear when we, I decided to vote for the, the, hearings to give you more time to get your questions answered okay. um well for me i guess as we move going into the motion i just wanted to, uh i prepared a statement that i was actually looking for testimony today that might change some of this statement um i did not hear any um so this is still where i stand on the issue and that is um this is a rustic area the public seems to want to keep it rustic. Uh, there is no testimony to the Planning Commission or the Board of Commissioners from the public that's in favor of this parking lot. Um, another concern is on the question that State Park answered in number six, what is the existing versus proposed traffic data? Uh, and they said that we do not have traffic data for the pit trailhead. We do not expect significant changes giving the existing parking lots of uh, availability on pit on both sides of the highway. Um, my concerns there uh, is with 14 parking spots and three horse trailers proposed. Um, I don't see why the state would build a parking lot this large when the locals see two or three cars a day, um, unless they actually forecast more use. Uh, and if they're forecasting more use, that can conflict with um, the public's interests. Um, I myself see increased use. I see increased use by drivers going north and crossing southbound traffic on a semi-blind corner. Um, this causes me concerns of driver safety. Uh, cre creating this parking lot will unwillingly encourage river users to park in the lot and cross the state highway with no crosswalk or raised crossover. Um, short shortcuts in planning, in proper planning like this, in my opinion, uh, in re increased risk to local residents and can cost lives. Uh, the state's answer to are there plans to remove animal waste um, was, and I'll quote again, there will be a pet waste station. Um, that's it, end quote. Uh, no mention of how they plan to remove the horse dung from the roadway that the residents will have to drive through. Um, I also have concerns about encouraging bike riding, dog walking, and equestrian routes uh, use on the same trail because I and think that is inviting conflict and a public safety issue. Uh, we all know you can't speed next to horses. We all know you can't uh, have your dogs running loose next to horses. Uh, unfortunately, we live in the country and we know that city folk don't know that and they're the ones that are going to be using this trail. Um, I believe there needed to be better larger siding telling the users of the trail that they can't leave the ballast or it's trespassing. Uh, I have concerns that there's no water for the horses at the trailhead, and I think that's going to invite the horses to trespass um, on neighbors' properties uh, to get to the water. And in doing so, in anywhere they're getting to the water, they are going to be trampling the riparian area, uh, causing bank erosion, uh, whether that's on State Park's property or on a neighbor's property. Um, with all those things, I personally find this parking lot is absolutely harmful to the local residents and that the public interest absolutely suffers substantial detrimental effect. Uh, so it'd be my recommendation for the Board of County Commissioners to deny this application. Well, being that there's only two of us that can vote on this, um, and it doesn't sound like anything's going to sway your mind. Um, I guess you're going to need to step down to make a motion to deny the um, substantial development permit. 
All righty, I will step down as chairman. Um, I move that we the deny shoreline substantial development permit and shoreline conditional use permit SH2022-03, uh, thereby forwarding to the Department of Ecology for final decision um, for the reasons I stated above. I will second the motion for discussion. Um, while I understand your concerns, um, I also think about the Klickitat Trail um, and the plans that State Parks has for increasing the use of that trail and improvements throughout that trail system that they have discussed, planned, worked with stakeholders, tribes um, for years. And I think you could go down right now to Catherine Creek, you can go to Coyote Wall, you can go all over the gorge and you can see how busy it is, even on a work day like this. And um, I applaud state parks for looking into the future, um, for trying to plan and design um, uh, parking features that meet state and ADA standards where currently none exist at that site. Um, and I applaud them for thinking out 20 to 30 years on what tourism will likely look like through that area and trying to plan for it. Um, I would uh, be in favor of um, approving this substantial development permit even though I may not agree with the exact location, um, I think State Parks um, has provided ample evidence of their planning, their intention, and their processes um, for um, moving forward with this. I know that the State Parks takes anything within the shoreline very seriously um, when they do their designs. I think they have uh, um, are attempting to enhance the recreational opportunities for our equestrian community. And I applaud them for that as well. Um, and I hate to say it, but I've seen many instances uh, throughout my years where bicyclists, horses, and walkers can all commingle and be on the same road or area. Um, I see more issues when uh, horses are walking next to vehicles um, than I do with bicycles. Um, and I have many of those trails right next to my own property. Um, and we have gotten along just fine over the years. Um, with that, um, I can't vote in favor of your motion, sir. Um, but I think that this, uh, this is going to die as we cannot uh, meet a uh, majority. Okay, so I will ask staff, is, is this, um, I mean, does Ecology have final say on this even if we can't get to an agreement? I, uh, or is this dead right here and you don't need my remarks to submit to Ecology as denied? Or you don't know? That's a good question. Um, typically you approve it, approve it with conditions or deny it and the Ecology has the final review. They've got 30 days to make their decision. Um, I don't know. I don't want to put you on the spot right now. How about this? Um, how about we've, we've not made a motion to approve and we've not made a motion to deny. So this is essentially dead in this chamber. Um, the question is where do we go from here and we'll give you some time to figure that one out. Um, and we'll let you come forward and take my statement um of my concerns in case it does go to ecology that can be forwarded on with it uh, okay um and then yeah keep us notified what you find out on how we go from here with a no yes vote and no no vote we'll do i did, <laughs> didn't research that option didn't because <laughs> it shouldn't weigh in on our findings so um or in our opinion so okay um Thank you everyone for attending. I know this may have caused some hard feelings on all sides. 
Uh, we're all doing what we think is best. Um, even the commissioners, we disagree, but we both think we are doing what is best for our citizens. Um, so moving on, uh, two o'clock, perfect, two o'clock. Uh, department update with Natural Resources Economic Development Director, Dave McClure. Uh, department update, please come forward with whoever you want to bring with you, sir. Look at this, we get good news today. I think so. Good afternoon, commissioners. Wow. I was not expecting any good news today. Dave great, McClure. Great news. <laughs> Dave McClure, Director of Natural Resources Economic Development. And I have with me Lorena Roll with the Washington Small Business Development Center. And she's got a, a bit of an update, a quarterly update on what's been happening with her office here locally. All right, thank you. So just a quickly, you know, I'm just going to give you the, um, just a quick snapshot and then I'll answer any questions that you have. So this first quarter, we serve 30 clients. Uh, Richard just asking me to give him like a ballpark where they are located. 10 are in Goldendale from those 30 and 20 are between uh, White Salmon and Bingen. Uh, the capital infusion meaning secure funds is nobody's out in loans, but secure and we, um, Either refinance or we have new money coming into these businesses is half a million. Uh, job supported between all of them, meaning retaining them or having adding some new jobs are 64. New businesses, four. And the reported revenue is $300,000. Um, and that's really low because a lot of the clients that we have do not do report the first quarter because they are doing taxes. So that is, um, so let me tell you a little bit about what is happening and um, like we discussed at the end of last year so basically what we're working on is a lot of reorganization and, and uh, looking at the companies and the clients and we have and making sure that they're more efficient um, trying to figure out if we can do some refinancing the interest rate is extremely high everywhere so i do not see um i don't um I guess my guess is no, we're not going to see a lot of money, a lot of loans this year. I actually do not even recommend it unless, unless we're consolidating debt. What we're seeing is, what we discussed before, is the idle loans, you know, three loans, and now we're seeing again credit card debt. And that credit card debt in some of the small businesses is how their financing concerns me. So what we're trying to do is, if we have a 23, if we have a 23 percent credit card debt and we have loans at 10 percent might as well go back to the 10 percent versus the 23. so you know i am very very concerned about these scenarios brings me back to 2008 i don't want to be pessimistic and i don't want to scare anybody but really seeing that debt to ratio and how people need to finance it's concerning how are you sorry to interrupt no, but okay. are you seeing this problem on Multi-million dollar businesses, or is this just mom and pop's financial troubles? These are the mid, uh, small to medium size. I mean, not the, not the very, very small ones. So we are looking at the, at the people that are operating, you know, the restaurants that we have in town, the, in all over the county. Um, if we're talking about companies bigger than 50 employees, then you know that they have millions of dollars in revenue. I'm not concerned about them. That's a different, that we're, talking about different ball games. And as I spoke before, we have the high-end businesses and they actually are stable and they have more financial tools than, you know, like the restaurants here that they're trying to open and they're trying to sustain and they're investing and they're working the businesses. Those are the ones that they are paying with credit cards. So the good news is that we're seeing some activity in the small businesses. They are not completely shut down or dead. As a matter of fact, you may be aware that through the grants of commerce, there was about $300,000 that have been invested in this county from commerce to provide high, very, very high end training in the community. And there are three there are four weeks of three days training. Then they started two weeks ago. We're on the third week. We have two more weeks to go or five weeks. And when I said high end, I mean, some of these trainers are being paid $25,000 to come to Goldendale, the trainings are being done 
here by the chamber. Um, they are organized by the Chamber of Commerce. And the good news about it is that we are recruiting a lot of new clients. Last, between the last two weeks, we've recruited 60 new clients. Um, all are active, all are you know, doing business. Some of them, some people are starting. We have um, medical practice and is trying to relocate to another location. So we're working here. I'm talking Goldendale right now only because I know interest in what's happening here. So we have one relocation that might involve purchasing a property and some expansion, blah, blah, blah. We have a new client that has not been able to find uh, any real estate retail space to operate. So we're working with them, trying to figure out some space in downtown. Uh, we have a restaurant that is doing great, that is looking to expand really fast. So we're back to the childcare with another proposal that we're going to be reviewing next week with another group of people. It's a different scenario. Um, so it has been very, very active. Um, through the presentations and these trainings. And the good thing about these trainings are bringing, for example, this week we have something that is called Profit Mastery, and I am required to take. It is um, an extremely expensive and high-end training in finances, and there are about 16 people taking the class this week. Last week we have service industry, somebody from our network came and did the training for restaurants and hotels. Um, so that's, I mean, I'm going fast, the, that's basically what's going on um, in the community. We have one, I got one new client, and I didn't even know that was in the county, it's not located in Goldendale, but we are actually gonna start looking in, uh, trying to secure some funds from the SBA export. They're ready to export, they already are producing in China, and they already are selling in Germany and in England, and they were contacted just through uh, via email on their, um, on their online shop. I was not aware of that. So I work with, I'm working with them a lot on that. I have another client that is local here and, and they're, we're packaging something ready to kind of, they're already producing in Mexico and they have some connections through it, um, a show that they did and they're looking into Australia and another two vendors overseas. So uh, that's a surprise for me. One is in Goldendale, the other one is in Bingen. So that's where we are. Okay. Yeah, I think you're going to be surprised as you go through this, as people start popping up and we're like, God, we didn't even know they existed. Uh, but it's good to get them in a binder right. so that if there's something we have later that can offer them, we know who to offer to. So no, that's good news. Exactly. The challenge is to make sure that they don't come to us when they are at because the economic climate that we have right now, I just hope they don't come to me when they have like sixty, seventy thousand dollars in debt in credit card. Well, that's the kicker. Because that's going to be, I mean, one of the clients that I have, they're paying seven hundred dollars credit cards, and it's like, let's not do that because we cannot refinance that. If you, you, you I, unfortunately, in this interest rate, I think we're going to weed out uh, financially sound, financially managed right. companies versus those that aren't. Um, so. Right. Yeah. Um, questions, comments? Any questions? What are you hearing from all the businesses that are now paying back the EIDL loans that we had 50 plus million, I think is what you said last right. time. Now. Right. Are you, is that, are you hearing that people are having a really tough time making those payments? Are they, and what do you see happening? They're, uh, at this point, they're taking the advantage of the extension which the only thing he's doing is adding interest to the bill. Uh, it's gonna be, a, I mean, I had a presentation with the commissioners at the other county, it's gonna be a bumpy road. I mean, I'm gonna be honest, it's gonna be a bumpy road. I mean, I already have three that may, are probably not gonna make it. Um, and those ones are the hard ones because that's, as, as we discussed before, idle loans, depending on the amount, are basically personal guarantee. And IRS is collecting the money, so those ones are gonna be hard to um, maneuver and uh, the challenge with those is I had one client that's probably the one that is concerning me the most that was not my client at the time that decided to sell the assets and that's a big no-no. So decided to sell the assets to kind of keep surviving and now it's going to be a mess because those assets oh. cannot be sold and cannot be used. So, you know, as people are trying to come up with solutions, 
which, you know, totally understandable, right? There's like, uh, we have to feed our families, but those kind of solutions with IRS involved and federal funds that are not going to be uh, easy to maneuver, especially selling assets. Than our yeah, I have a feeling that a lot of people took those loans mm -hmm. thinking they were going to never have to pay them back, that the federal government was going to, oh, it's like college debt, we're going to forgive it. Right. And a lot of people took them, never knowing, and now they're they're going to have some harsh right. problems. Right. We're right. over $34 billion in interest and haven't been no pay, unpaid, not paid nationwide. So um, I said, I think we all saw it coming from day one before anybody right. even got the thing. Right. At least so, that at least that money is at a lower interest rate than any loan you can get right now. It, correct. It's just accumulation of the interest, right? By the, I mean, we, we have three years of interest of the interest of the interest at 3%. We are about the same. Well, I think the ones that were in good financial shape beforehand. I mean, I, me and my business, I almost did one, not because I needed it, but because it was such a good interest rate, I was thinking I might just lock up some credit for 30 years right. and just not use it until, you know, five years from now if I need a boat or something, right. you know. Um, but I'm like, no, yeah, I mean, I don't, you know, no. How long is there extensions? We are in six months right now. Mm -hmm. So they did the first round in six months. My guess is they're going to, I mean, I got to be careful with my words because part of this is my opinion and the other one is, you know, I, I think that if, if extensions don't happen, something is going to crash. And that's my personal opinion as of, you know. So my personal opinion is that we're going to probably see more extensions. And I also see or I also feel and think, it's just me, that at some point there's going to be evaluation of the sizes of the loans and potentially different options. I mean, we have a two, three million dollars loans versus like a twenty million, twenty thousand dollars loans. It's probably going to be. I'm not. They're not going to be forgivable. That's clear. They're going to be paid. That's clear. It is not going to change. But I think that with the people that are in the twenties to fifty thousands, may do something differently. You know, other kind of extensions that the the ones that you know concern me the most is the businesses, the, the bulk of the businesses and are in the hundreds, between one hundred to two hundred thousand dollars. Those ones are the ones that in 30 years is over half a million dollars with a balloon payment at the end. And if they are on the 40s, we're talking about in the 70s, early 80s, paying a balloon payment, then it's going to take the house. And they're, yeah, they're personal assets. It's a personal, it's a personal asset. This, yeah. The first two layers are, all of them are personal. Uh, I mean, personal guarantee. Socialism grand. Here, have some free money. It doesn't hurt. Right. So common, good, the good side is commerce has been releasing funds on and off, you know, that short period of time, but there's some grants coming and going. And uh, then it's kind of helping to relieve some of that. Um, but, you know, I, I just i am concerned that the more money comes in, it's just more fresh money and it's not. I mean, debt needs to start getting paid. So hopefully we can start helping more businesses to kind of reorganize their finances and find a path, a, a financial path that can help them out to uh, balance this out. It started as good news and then it changed. How many of those are in our county estimate number wise? So in our county, uh, we have $12 million out on idle loans. How many specific businesses? I do not know that because that's the, the amount is what was lent from SBA. And some of them are my clients, but not all of them. Okay. So I do not know that. Okay. Twelve million, you said. Twelve million. Well, it's better than what I thought it was. Yeah, me too. Without interest. And it's is it four two five or three seven five? Pardon me. Interest rate is it four two five or three seven five? Four four seventy five. Uh, you know what? I need to get back with you. I I, I don't remember exactly. I don't remember either. I just remember it seemed pretty reasonable at the time. Yeah. Um, it was between 375 and 425. It's around there. But I forgot the, the, the exact rate. Sorry. Any other questions? I don't have any. Try to keep us on time here. So it is 15. Okay. It was Perfect. 375. Can I step out? Yes. Okay. Thank, thank you. Richard. Good to see you all. Uh -huh. thank have you. a good afternoon. Yep. Thank you. It didn't have a balloon payment, though. Uh, yeah, it did. My observation, you got to put a picture of it. I'm not sure if you got it.
Oh, wow. No, I meant, I meant to drive by it yesterday and I didn't do it. So this is a picture of, uh, I'll show you the little box, man. Um, so this is a picture of the incubator space that's being built down there at the, at the uh, industrial park. Um, right I had already indicated that uh, we're doing the Small Business Innovation Fund grant program. That's with the chambers. Uh, I believe that's where Chelsea's at right now with the profit mastery that's, that's occurring. Uh, we're attending. We're attending all the events uh, in support of that, and uh, that was broken down. That was a 1.1 million dollar grant that we got from the Department of Commerce. Um, <clears throat> right off the top, uh, just uh, for your situational awareness, we're anticipating a 0.09 request from the City of Bingen at our next uh, KCP meeting uh, on May 2nd, um, and currently I'm working with the Columbia Gorge Regional Airport. Um, you more tell specific us what the request is oh yes just, yes i'm sorry just hey uh, <laughs> come on yeah this yeah, coming down the pipeline <laughs> just give us a quarter million <laughs> um a water line extension and it, it's supposed to do a uh, small housing development as well as a uh like a for commercial purposes as well there's gonna be uh multiple parts to that water line extension. cost or ask uh we're not exactly certain but i would i would anticipate around two hundred fifty thousand. i guess i've Okay, we, we haven't gotten that far yet. You gave me a basic ballpark. Are they, are they going to present an application or are they mm -hmm. just going to present the concept and are they looking for a recommendation at the board, out of the board at the next meeting, do you know? I believe they're going to be looking at a recommendation. There, I believe there's going to be an ask. Okay. We'll talk. <clears throat> um, so with the regional airport, um, I'm currently working with the Community Aviation Revitalization Board out of the Department of Commerce for what a loan might look like for the airport in regards to the architectural and engineering costs associated with the, uh, with the phase two of the infrastructure as well as the new hangar space for the workforce development project with uh, the Columbia Gorge Community College. Um, we're still running through numbers and stuff like that. Um, I've already spoken about Golden Bell. No, just a clarify. So, so this <clears throat> car blown is is a backup in case the congressional oh. spending ask yes. doesn't work. Yeah. So, um, if thank you for reminding me about that. Um, so, previously we put in an earmark request about a month ago. We're not going to find out until August or September whether or not that is going to be approved. And so, in the meantime, we're looking at what this might look like. Um, if this is, is if this is a viable option. We're looking at it applying for late June, early July, getting it approved and everything like that with all the contracts signed by uh, September, October, um, in which case we would use that as a match for the uh, federal investment, the federal EDA investment review committee. Um, our loan would be 550,000, which is a 22% match uh, for the amount of shortfall that we're experiencing down there for that project. So the, our ask from the investment review committee would be $1.85 million. If that, so they would be funding it at 80%. So, but we're still working on what all the numbers of that would look like and for the loan, who, who we could have service the loan. There's a couple of ideas on, on how we could get that serviced without it impacting the county budget. So currently still working that piece, if that makes sense. Um, for business retention and expansion, uh, workforce development, we have an SRF, uh, a state revolving fund loan, uh, or not loan, a state revolving funds workforce development grant request. It's for $41,000. Uh, we're going to be training up 39 employees from two aerospace companies on the West End. Um, we have our last cohort of the scale up program. I'm not sure what the numbers are for the, fir for the first cohort, but We've been advertising that through the chambers. Um, I can jump in for just a second on that uh, SRF loan to, uh, for the training. Mm -hmm. Chelsea's been working with you. Mm -hmm. Richard's been working with Chelsea, sort of training how that grant program works. And, mm -hmm. and she's put in the application. So let's get yeah. on board in her with that. Yeah. And so, yeah, I've, I've been training up Chelsea. She's been doing a killer job. Uh, for the next few projects is, that, is actually what, what she's been working on. Uh, She's also got the job fair that's going on right now. So that's May 10th from 2 to 3 p.m. Um, our HR department's also going to be in attendance along with seven businesses. Uh, it's being advertised at the schools. Uh, right now we have a commitment from Glenwood. Um, 
this, this is going to be taking place at the Golden Dell uh, High School. So we'll have Golden Dell and, and Glenwood. Um, and we're still waiting on uh, some transportation. They're, they're trying to work some transportation out from Lyle and Trout Lake, um, what that might look like. And we have reached out. Uh, we do have a union rep that's going to be attending from Union uh, 335 Laborers. They're also going to be in attendance. Um, moving forward, we have two different projects, two different efforts from broadband. The first one's with the Washington Department of Commerce. Uh, this one's sponsored by Rapid Design Study. It's a, or that's the program name. It's a feasibility study and is being performed by Breaking Point Solutions. Uh, it's currently underway. They tentatively ID, uh, identified some areas of, uh, of interest and greatest need. And they currently have an interactive map uh, showing the different speeds across Klickitat County on their website. Um, and then we're still working with WSU for the WSU extension program for that. Uh, and that's going to be along with uh, Carrie over at McKed. Um, and the pro where we're at in the process for that right now is we're currently trying to gather some data and as well as build out information on what that's going to look like. Um, and then last, but certainly not least, uh, click a tap mill site. So since our last update, we had that work, that group, that work group session, I believe May 16th, uh, here, here with, uh, with everyone. Um, our next meeting is going to be on May 15th. And that's going to be with Mid Columbia Fisheries, uh, Yakima Nation Fisheries, and Ecology, and that's going to be in regards to what the um, what the creek restoration for Snyder Creek is going to look like, and uh, the discussion is going to be on the constraints and the potential liabilities of the site itself. So it's going to be May fifteenth, and and I've included Jenny, our new natural resource person, so she'll also be there as well. So. And then I believe that's about it. No problem. Okay. Right. Thank you. Thank you. And a couple other items, if we've got time. Uh, the disaster grant program, I'm still working on that contract. There, the insurance issue, we've still not gotten past that. Uh, you know. Was that the DocuSign that I keep yes, getting? Sir. Okay, I keep getting it. Uh, I'm, I'm getting concerned because <laughs> of the time frames. Here we need to this is a federal grant, federally funded grant, um, and we'll have to the end of May if we can't get this solved pretty soon. I talked to the Commerce's uh, grant manager this morning, and so I'll be talking to her in the next day or two because if we can't solve this riddle with the insurance, we'll need to see if we can find an, another associate development organization nearby to be willing to pick these up so we could. Make sure that those businesses. Why, why are we now? I mean, have we never done this loan before? So we've never had to worry about this insurance? It's the insurance provisions. Uh, according to her this morning, uh, the Department of Commerce has put those insurance clauses in there for some time. And I, I had sent her uh, the insurance clause out of some of our previous grants, the Working Washington II, for example which is very brief and non-specific and right, right 25 counties have the same insurance company we do have so i mean right so i don't know what they how they come up with this she said they've been doing it for some time the last grant we got from the department of commerce was our associate development organization grant at least my department and it was two sentences as opposed to a pay a, a page of you know, different coverages and amounts that are needed. I don't think it's so much the coverages and amounts, it's that naming commerce and additionally insured and making sure that they recognize the risk pool as opposed to an insurance company that's licensed to do business. How is that worded? I haven't provided- I say they're in a single yet. county that uses an insurance company, not a single county in this state yeah. uses an insurance company, yeah. so. Yeah, so. Yeah, it concerns me, and again, I'm, we're expecting an associate development here after the, uh, you know, in July or August, and if they're putting that in there, we need to address this. And then, but yes, that, it's a problem at this point, but working on it. Uh, uh, just note that, that uh, Substitute House Bill 1783 did pass. That's the, uh, I believe it was a Department of Commerce or request uh, to fund uh, the recruiting 
hiring and retaining of a grant writer for associate development organizations. Uh, I've not seen that, pro, you know, I've not seen the details of that, but that apparently is going to be coming and I saw a note so far in a review of the, the operating budget that this is one time money and I don't know how they expect to recruit somebody and if they don't see how you're going to fund them in the future. So that more to come on that. Commerce will have until next July to, to put the program together. So that's something that's coming. So if you might keep an ear out if your fellow commissioners around the state are looking at that or if, if WASAC or somebody else has some insight as to what's happening there. Um, our associate development uh, organization grant, we expect the same amount of funding as, as we've gotten the last few years, so that's 75000 a year for, for that. So, so that's all on economic development. Any questions for staff? No. Okay, then okay. how are we doing on time? Um, you got five minutes or more. Okay, uh, on natural resources, uh, Jennifer uh, is uh, busy working on the lead entity program, as you call it. She came on board as that was just kicking off. It's a, a many faceted uh, program to get that grant process through, and she's doing an excellent job, in my opinion. Uh, we've got uh, three pro projects in the process uh, with grant applications. Two are from the Yakima Nation, one from Columbia Land Trust, the Yakima Nation's proposing a floodplain restoration uh, up in the upper end of the Klickitat uh, along the Howard Lake Hall Road. They're looking for, a, the ask on surfboard is 500,000. It's a one and a half million dollar project. Uh, the Yakima Nation also has a lower white salmon uh, river acquisition. That's an acquisition of both sides of the the White Salmon River from the former site of Condit Dam to the to Highway 14. Uh, it's Pacific Horse project, prog, uh, property. Uh, the, the tribe has a agreement with Pacific Horse. It's a, a, a right of first offer. Offer, yeah. Uh, so that's that's what we have from the tribe. That's a, also a 500,000 ask, uh, and they're putting together a, a larger funding package for that. What CLT's project? Uh, Columbia Land Trust Upper Rattlesnake Habitat Enhancement. It's it's the area below the falls and just below DNR's property at the falls, and it's uh, you know putting wood structures in there try to retain uh, some of the water and the gravels to get it blown out in that stream. So it's, yeah. their their ask is 150k. Uh, total project is 176. Um, your package this week or next, I believe it's this week, will have a, a grant amendment for our Switzer project. This grant amendment is just extending the end date from June 30 to the end of this year. <clears throat> uh, during that time, we're going to be finalizing a, a revised scope of work and uh, uh, some additional funding on the budget. Uh, so that'll be coming uh, again before the end of the year. You'll get that second amendment, I anticipate. Uh, I'm going to be putting in for your, for your consideration next week a contract amendment. Aspect Consulting is the one that's doing the work on that. This also extends the end date of their contract from June 30 to the end of the year to coincide with the end of the grant. Um, and there's a task order, so the task order type contract. So task order 19, uh, the, the board approves those task order amendments. So the task order will be amended as well to extend the end date. Where are we bad on well monitoring? Are we skipping a year? I think we're skipping this spring anyway. Yeah, there's just too much going on. All right. Well, thank you. Perfect. Thank you, sir. Thank you all. Yeah, and all. Okay, next up, uh, 229. Boy, we are kind of on schedule today. Uh, Veterans Advisory Board update. 
Um, do we have a veterans advisory board? Do they have an update? <laughs> I say come forward. I don't know that uh, we've had official introductions for our new commissioner. So let's do introductions and uh, tell us what you're working on. Okay. Um, as this year's chairman, I'm Bill Caldwell. I represent uh, American Legion, uh, White Salmon American Legion Post 87. And I'm Jack Sutton. Uh, I'm representing the Post 116. Take note from Brian. Okay. And Frank Huey, I'm Member at large for District Two, and uh, Cindy Furlong. She's not here. She's, she, uh, I talked to her. She's she's just getting out of Vancouver right now, so she wasn't going to be able to make the meeting. She called me. And we have a new member, uh, Erin Quinn. Oh, know. that's right. And uh, see what district would she be with number what? Right, chicks. Uh, point D. So as chairman of the group, I guess I'll give a summary. Excuse me, I got a throat lozenge. Yep. You talk think. through that because <clears throat> I've been over horse today. Uh, we met last Wednesday. And uh, first of all, I want to make sure that we extend gratitude and thanks to both our support folks here. Uh, they do an outstanding job every year getting us organized and, and supported. So really appreciate Lee and her staff. Uh, we met Wednesday for about 45 minutes or an hour, and um, the updates, first of all, we have two new folks, so we introduced ourselves, and we went, the first order of business was we elected this year's uh, officers, so I'm this year's chairman, and then uh, next year, well, the vice chairman this year would be Frank, right? Yeah, that was and chairman then he, last year. Then he comes up chairman next year, yeah. Lucky you. Yeah. Right. I, just, I just came off of that. <laughs> I guess I shouldn't have been at the meeting. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Just, you were missing on the mic there. It was on there. Yeah. Yeah. Now, uh, so we took the order of business in terms of indigent vets, which is, of course, is our focus and, and our charter uh, from the commissioners. Last year's activities, or well, this past year's activities since we met last, uh, we collectively uh, probably had somewhere between six and eight encounters, if you want to call it that, for indigent vets. One of them uh, we submitted a claim for, but unfortunately uh, he was, didn't know, couldn't make up his mind if he lived in White Salmon or Hood River. He had a Hood River address on his application, so the audit, auditors rejected that application uh, as per what the rules are and the American Legion Post, we went on and absorbed that expense for him. Uh, that brought up an issue, which I'll get to in a minute, which we need to consider what sort of help indigent vets need. The other indigent vets that we had contact with typically needed uh, gas cards. And both Goldendale and the White Salmon Legion Post provided gas cards to those folks. Now the question is, is that reimbursable not from the county? We have asked the auditor's office to interpret the RCW on that, because the RCW is fairly explicit uh, on what's reimbursable and what's not. Uh, so there again, the both posts have went on and absorbed that, uh, those particular costs until we adjudicate whether or not a gas card is reasonable to give an indigent vet in need to get to work or get to a hospital or whatever. Um, that to, to uh, go back to the first bit I was talking about, his need, he was homeless and living out of his car, but he had a need for a, uh, to pay for rent on a rental unit because that's where he keeps his tools when he is able to work. Now to us, that was sort of a legitimate issue. Uh, whether or not that's reimbursable, the auditor's office said no. His application was rejected anyway because of other issues, but. That's a future situation we may encounter is a rental space because the individual needs that's where his maybe living his car, but that's where his all his, his basically his all his possessions lie. Is that reimbursable or not? We don't know. That's something to consider. 
So that, in summary, is have been our encounters uh, this past year. A little more than the COVID years, but still, when you look at it, uh, not that many, and, and that's a good sign. We just haven't run into anybody more than just a few folks that really were so-called indigent and need help or otherwise couldn't get addressed by other resources. Uh, one of them, of course, being the, our, the VSO that the county employs, Frank uh, uh, Gallagher, uh, on behalf of the of the uh, Veterans Advisory Board, I, I met with Frank a while back, and uh, we had a good meeting and and agreed to support each other mutually as the resources and our policies allow. So we have a good uh, good relationship there. So that's a quick summary. Uh, Frank, you might have something to add. I'm just um, um, no, I think. Yeah. We don't really get the word out. I guess maybe we'll just get some direction from the board on maybe how we get the information out or get more information out to vets. That's the question I was going to have is the amount of people I run into that don't even know we have a VSO. Uh, it's astonishing. I was doing a senior uh, board update and they had no idea. And so give them all the information and then they can put it in the senior newsletter and ship it out, but not everybody gets a senior newsletter. So it's how do we how do we get the public? I mean, we're looking for ideas. How do we get the public engaged? And then your concerns with uh, what is covered and what isn't. I never even thought about things like that being considered gift to public funds uh, in being unlawful by state law for gas cards and whatever. So we're going to have to get some legal opinions from the prosecutor on what's a go and what's not a go, uh, where we can help and where we can't help. Uh, well, I know, but it's legal review from, we're going to have to, I'm sure the auditor's doing it, but we need guidance so we can give them guidance um, on where to go from here. Because to me, that's kind of the same thing, education. I mean, if you can get newspaper, radio, um, whatever, but we're going to have to check and make sure that that's an allowable use to spend the funds too. So uh, that's biggest concern to me is getting the word out. The only other issue we've had is I know Cindy uh, was trying to get some emergency meds for one vet, and uh, the hospital wouldn't take our check. Um, so she was trying to work something out where that wasn't an issue in the future if it came up, but because there was no account set up, they wouldn't accept the check from us, even uh, though it was a county check. <laughs> it was weird. That's uh, interesting. <laughs> Cindy's sure. trying to work with them to try to set something up so something like this doesn't happen in the future but it's something that we might have to look at especially when we're trying to deal with a veteran if we can't get get the funds to them to, to get things done you know it becomes an issue well and hopefully we ended up running it through the Louis Liddell account to get the, get the meds for him oh that works yeah hopefully you guys can work uh work with the auditor and kind of get a, a list of what what you can do, what you can do. Um, she'll just have to get a prosecutor request to get that through there. But the yeah, biggest thing to me is education. I mean, we don't educate people fall through the cracks. Simple as that. Well, fall through uh, the cracks every day, even mm -hmm. with education. But yeah. It's crazy that everybody looks at those community sites online. Everything Goldendale, Dallasport, Age. Um, yeah, but I talk about it on there and nobody has any idea. Well, even veterans that come to the Legion, there's so many that don't don't realize they even have stuff available to them, but they've never even applied for it. And unfortunately, a lot of it isn't available to them until they do apply for it. You know, so. Well, and personally, I just think that part of that there's, a, as a veteran, you don't want to ask for help. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and so getting that word out there and making it accessible and making it, you know, understand that they earned that. And so I may, in, you know, I'll talk to the chairman when we go out here, but maybe I'll, I'll work with the auditor's office to see if we can update the page to include contact information for us on their web page under the VSO's mm -hmm. purview there and not have something separate, but at least have it there and available to work with them. So. By the way, this is Erin Quinn. She's our. Oh, was that Erin? Hi, Erin. Nice, nice to awesome. meet you. If you have anything to add, Erin, please jump in. I know you're brand new and everything, but. Feel free to engage. Uh, regarding getting the word out, 
it's common knowledge among most veterans or should be if they contact the VA, the Veterans Administration, almost always the VA will direct them through VSO because that's how most of the administrative. If uh, there is a VSO, that's well, the problem. Our, our county has one of them. And, and if a county doesn't have a VSO, then there's regional VSOs. But the VA, the VA will usually, the first thing they'll do, the first thing they'll do is say, hey, where's your VSO? You have one or whatever. Now, that doesn't mean an injured vet has never contacted the VA. They don't know anything. That's true. Now, we did lobby the state. <laughs> we did lobby the state this year through WASAC, Washington State Association of County, to supply more funding so the counties that don't have VSOs can get one. Um, yeah, unfortunately, that didn't go so well. Um, which you wouldn't think that would be a hard bill, but apparently it is. I think sadly, you know, if you're working with people that are indigent. Um, they usually don't have access to Facebook or whatever else. Um, and so you're in that hard position that most of this is word of mouth and it's word of mouth with the family members and the people who know them and their neighbors. And that's about the only way to get them because there's not a high likelihood that they're reading the newspaper or seeing the ads. And so, yeah, you're thankfully we've got all of you and you're all tied into your communities and that's, it's just, I mean, I'm glad there's only seven um, rather than, you know, 2,500 that are having the issue, but I know there's a bunch that are falling through the cracks and we just need to find them and get them the help. Well, I think our biggest problem is, I think it was Jack alluded to, uh, is a lot of veterans are aware of the VA and the VSO, but, and I know one personally, they just don't want the help. They won't ask for it. Mm -hmm. And they only do it when they're actually desperate. And we've had this discussion before last year with uh, folks. Uh, most of them, their biggest issues are mental health issues uh -huh. and, and drug dependent issues, and those are those are anchors that, that are around their feet that, uh, that cause a lot of problems. That, uh, to I, even I ask, know, I know. To, uh, up until a couple of years ago, when I actually got convinced to go talk to a VSO, I paid my own way, just paid my own bill, paid paid for my own medical coverage, everything, and. By chance, another veteran said, "Go in and see the VSO," <laughs> yeah. and now I have coverage, which for thirty years I didn't even know was available to me. You know. And on the behavioral health that. side, have you met Erin Quinn? She's she's working on it. <laughs> <laughs> Our current mental health expert until she can find somebody to replace her. There's plenty of need out there. Yeah. You'd be busy. I'd like to do you to one. Uh, yes, Madam Clerk. I have another uh, connection. Okay. Um, Jack is married to Sunday, who's on our board of health. Mm -hmm. We're like all the family. We're a big, giant public big health family, family, apparently. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. She knew about the appointment before I did. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Um, anything else you guys have for us or anything the board has for them? No, keep keep up the good work. We'll keep educating people, throwing them your way, and um, keep doing what you can. And please keep us advised if there's anything we can help you with. Um, well, we I think collectively I can say we definitely appreciate your support yes. and the support you give uh, the veterans uh, in this county. Uh, we might be looking to you to maybe adjudicate some of these issues and what's reimbursable and what's not future to tell yeah yeah I'm, I'm real curious on i think it's a good idea if you guys just sit down and like list out what each thing is you've ever been asked for the last 10 years and let's put them through an opinion request with the prosecutor and have him check the boxes on what's what's good and what's not um, so that you guys know right off the bat whether you're you're going to have something that's covered or not thank you for all everything okay. you guys do Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. God, we are killing the schedule today. You are worried about having enough time. Well, yeah, well, if we put this morning into this afternoon, we would have had a problem this afternoon. <laughs> yeah, still got time.
It's Number 45, thing. final review of the Clickitech County Carriage Shoulder Project comment packet to be submitted to FSEC um, Site Evaluation Council. Staff is in the room, I'm sure, if we have any questions. Um, I've looked over the packet. I, I thought it was very well put together for the short period of time that we had to put it together. Um, I'm sure we will have far more comments as we go through this fun process. Um, did you guys have any comments or concerns before we submit that? No? I thought it was good. Okay. It's a good job. A lot of work. Um, I was originally thinking about taking a paper copy of that, panning it to FSEC this evening in their meeting, but uh, the more I think about it, maybe it's just a smart idea to sign it and have staff email it over and um, not have to lug that around this afternoon. So yeah, that would have been my recommendation is we just sign that document and uh, submit it to FSEC. And if you guys don't have any comment, you're just going to have my day flying right along. I would just like to say um, sometimes we ask a lot of our department sometimes, heads. Sometimes he says. Sometimes we ask a lot more than a lot. And I would like to say thank you to all of the department heads who put this as a priority and whipped this out and did it in such a professional manner. Um, I read it and I was like, this is perfect. I hope this works. Um, I will do everything I can to support um, what you put down in my own comments later this evening. Um, and just again, thank you for everything from all those of you that worked on this. Um, it just goes to show, you know, we're pretty lean county and when we put our minds to it, you guys do amazing work. So thank you again. Yeah, I would echo that to all of the departments and all of the electeds and all of their staff that worked on this. Um, uh, yeah, um, I was I was impressed of what can be done in such a uh, short uh, period of time when everybody focuses. So, yeah, I was really pleased that individually you just picked it up and were responsible and and moved with it in that short time frame. And to me, I think it's twofold. Number one, we didn't really see anything that had to be edited, which is kudos because we like to edit things. Um, so yeah, no, that was, uh, that was, that was impressive. Okay. Well, if we're moving on, um, um I'm, has my seatmates, have you drafted speaking points or are you going to be speaking and do we want to share those amongst ourselves so that we're on the same page and at least, you know, walk in that, toe in that same line? Um, my speech is over here buried by my phone. Um, I don't know that I want to share that publicly now. I'm going to share that publicly with uh, this evening. Okay. It's just, just a question. Um, it's essentially the same thing I told you I would be speaking on is essentially all of it in a nutshell since this is not hearing. Well, and since we may have a short time frame, yep. there's a couple of versions. See, mine is, mine is scheduled at two minutes. Um, just hoping that I get two minutes. I'm hoping they don't tell everybody one minute. And if they do, I might ask for special privilege to have two. Um, not that I'm special, but um, I'm hoping they allow. If they don't, they'll get one minute and they get turned in and um, we'll, we'll go from there. I, I honestly, I'm curious how many people show up and how many people don't get to testify. So I would certainly hope everybody has it printed so they can drop it off at the door when they leave. Um, because I think the majority of the people are not going to get to speak. But that's my opinion, based on their short time frame of having the hearing or the meeting. Do we have uh, that printed off so we have to sign? Is that in here? Okay. Yep. Oh, we have a hand. Sorry. Uh, you're going to have to come forward to the microphone so everybody on Zoom land can hear you. And then you have to tell everybody who you are and what you do. Otherwise, they yell at me because they don't know. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Lynn Ward, Director of the Building Department. Are we attending tonight, are requested to attend tonight as directors, or are we there on our own? I just want to make sure I'm going in the right capacity. Oh, good question. Um, I, I personally don't think we should um, require 
our directors to go testify to FSEC because if they would like to go testify on their own personal capacity, even if that goes against the wishes of how the board feels on the issue, they should be allowed. Um, and we should not take their free speech away from them, however they feel on the issue. So I would not make them testify for us at that time, but that's just me. Okay, I just didn't know if you wanted us to go or if you didn't care. Um, I guess the one question I would have is, is you know, there's the 430 um, open house um, where they should be having some informational things. We may want any director who wants to go and take a look at that um, in your official capacities because that may help when we go for the next process and the next part of it. So, um, but I don't think it needs to be mandatory. Yeah, I, I would agree. I, I don't have a problem if you want to go learn about it during their one hour open house. Um, and then if you want to stick around for public testimony and testimony, testify as a resident of Goldendale for or against, I will not hold it against any of you. All so. right. It's a new thing. So I wanted to yeah. <laughs> make is, sure we were learning is always correctly. Yeah, right. All right. Thank you. It's a new thing that I wish we didn't have to deal with, but yeah. Good question. But great questions, actually. Questions I haven't thought of. Uh, any other questions from the room on that one? Staff members, no, not seeing it. Okay. All right. Well, we have that uh, draft document before us, and I'm sure we will sign it before we leave the room. And do we want to make a motion? Um, or just sign motion it? to accept? Is that what you're saying? Okay. Um, yeah, I don't mind. I mean, it puts us all on the record, so I'm always fine with being on the record. Mr. Chairman, I would move uh, for the acceptance and concurrence by the uh, Board of County Commissioners for uh, the staff uh, project comments on the Carriage of Solar project. And I will second. Okay, we have a motion and acceptance to uh, approve the staff comments. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving staff comments and submission to FSAC say aye. Aye. Aye, the motion passes. Um, once again, thank you everyone online that's not in the room. Um, thank Moshi for all of her hard work. I, I think here soon we're going to not be able to thank you enough for all the projects we put on your plate. Um, I'll take a second to thank Jeff for being able to get, submit his comments last minute that he didn't even know about it. Um, so I appreciate that as well. And everybody else online that's not in here, I can't say thank Lynn, because she went on vacation. You didn't invite me. <laughs> I know. All righty, moving on. Mr. Chairman, I would make a motion to approve the consent agenda with all 13 items. And I will second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda with 13 items. Is there any discussion on any of those items? Hearing none, all those in favor of approval of the consent agenda with 13 items say aye. 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 Motion passes. I would just make one note that we're going to have a, some sort of a signing of the CFA, you know, for a picture or photo op or something down in, I don't know when we're going to have it. They're still talking about it, but. For everybody on the Zoom land that doesn't know what you're talking about, you're talking about the bridge. Yep. Uh, um, Commission joint, formation joint bridge commission. agreement. Yep. Okay. And so, you know, it's, we won't actually be signing anything. It's just a photo op. So just want to I let won't, you guys Oh, so are we were going? If you okay. want, but I don't think it was, it wasn't requested. It was just kind of the bi-state working group. That's what I it. thought. That's like, well, you said you will have a, and I'm like, wait a minute. Okay. Um, okay. If I need to go, let me know. And if I don't need to go, okay. you can handle it. I will let you know. Um, okay. Ready? So, Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to approve the count payable warrants in the amount of $1,019,742.31 and payroll benefits and warrants in the amount of $1,107,843.62 for the date ending April 24, 2023. I will second the motion. Okay, we have a motion and a second to pay the bills. All those in favor of paying the bills say aye. 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 That's a big packet. That's a big packet. Oh, 
it just screwed the pooch. I don't know if that's appropriate to say in public. Well, I'm not statesmanlike. We all know that. I'm just giving you a hard time, sir. I know. Say, if the people wanted a politician, they should have voted somebody other than me. Okay. Yep. Just make sure I wouldn't. All right, um, any other issues for the board, board pending before we move on to executive um, and more talks about, uh, I don't, landfill contract stuff. I don't believe so, let me check. Okay, I do, I do have a question that I'm gonna break protocol again since I tend to do that as a chairman prerogative, hit me with your switch. Mm -hmm. Are you hitting me with your switch? No, it was a pencil. Okay. Um, I'm hoping you can give us an update on how your tour went today. Did anybody show up to that, or do you know? Great left when I came here. I and you don't know anything? Okay. It was at 2.30. Okay. So I can tell you, headed that way. I'm sure we'll find out later, but there okay. There were no cars there when we went came this way. Okay. I don't know. I hope people showed up. Well, I hope FSEC shows up. Because I'm not even sure they're going to show up. Yeah, I know show up. Well, I hope they even show up to our meeting. And it's not just two of them in the restaurant Zoom. So we'll, we'll see. Um, I, I'm that's speculating. Sorry. I'm, I have no, she's going to hit me. I have to. The room will be full. She's harmless. Don't tell him. She scares me. <laughs> She's got a switch over here with my name on it. Um, okay, no, I just, that would have been, I might ask him when we get there, because it was good information to take with us in there. So, okay, anything else uh, that the board needs before we convene into executive session? Um, I beat off the bottom yep. section. I think there's more to it than that. Um, we are going to go into executive session. Normally, when we go into executive session, we come out and adjourn the, the, the meeting uh, and take no further action and what have you. But uh, on this one, we are going to reopen the meeting um, and have um, probably some more dis public discussion. Uh, so if you want to like check out and then check back in, um, how long do you figure the executive 15 minutes? Well, I, I, I don't want anybody popping back on because they're not going to be aware of our extensions. So we need to kind of pick a number and try to stick to it if, or as close to possible. So yeah, we'll go with 15 minutes. There might be a five minute extension. So if you come back in 15 and we're not on, try again five minutes later. Um, and then once we come on, we'll give you a second to reestablish yourself in the Zoom. Um, other than that, uh, I do want to make a note that the Board of County Commissioners will be attending the uh, FSEC uh, Energy Site Facility Evaluation Council open house tonight from 4.30 to 5.30 and then they have a public meeting uh, regarding the Carringer Solar Project from 5.30 to 7 at the Goldendale Grange uh, located at 2280 Starland Goldendale and that will be tonight. Um, uh, also noting that the Senior Services Department has invited the Board of County Commissioners to attend their volley Volunteer Appreciation Lunch on Friday the 25th in this building downstairs conference room. 27th? Uh, oh, sorry, I have 28th written here. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, my dyslexia. Um, and then there was something else I wanted to address that we may be more than one commissioner going to. But I can't think of what it was. Well, I have a little meeting here to Earth. Um. Uh, did you add the tour of the treatment plant? No, that's what it is. Tour of the treatment plant. Uh, both commissioners, uh, Christopher and Anderson, will be meeting with the Dallas Co 
support community. Potentially. Um, well, if they, they, they requested a meeting, let's just go that way, uh, to do a tour of the Dallasport Wastewater Center, which is at 1030 tomorrow in Dallasport. Um, and that'll be given by PUD and Public Works. So we won't be conducting any business. We are just there to look at uh, dirty water. Let's just put it that way. Um, with that, we will be uh, going into executive session. Um, again, with accordance of RCW 42.30.110, print I, print D, to review negotiations and performance of a public bid contract when public knowledge regarding such consideration could cause the likelihood of increased costs. Uh, and this is a uh, landfill contract. So. Oh, that's true. So we will ask everybody online to remove yourself from Zoom. Um, you know what? This time what we could do, why don't we just mute it and shut the video down so that they can still stay on there? Um, that way they can just wait. It's totally up to you. I'm fine with that. It's a very big risk that if we do it wrong and they're hearing us, we have a problem, but. Oh, we can see if we're talking or not. Yeah, well, we I'd agree. Yeah. So yeah, I'd close the camera, close the mic. Yep, talking again. I see a mic moving, so I'm assuming we're go. Okay. All right, we continued our um, executive, or we didn't continue. We did our executive for 15 minutes um, and then stopped and brought staff in the room. And so we've done nothing since executive. We are now going to uh, go back into our regular um, afternoon meeting of the Clickstack County Board of Commissioners. Um, in open discussions on the request from Republic Services to discount the um, Skagit County rate of $1.50. Does anybody want to start? Feel free, Chair. <laughs> Feel free. Um, I believe what we should all do at this point, since we are in open session at this point, uh, I do want to give guidance to Republic on uh, where we all are currently standing, um, but that needs to be done and open. Um, if we're actually making a decision, it needs to be in open session. So that's what this is. Um, with that, it would be my um, feeling at this point in time uh, to not give a rate um, decrease until I've been able to get more information um, from Skagit County uh, and do more research into this um, yeah I'll leave it short and sweet because I don't want to interfere with anything that uh, was discussed in executive and I agree I'd like to have more information from Skagit County before I make a decision I, of course, uh, agree that we need to have all of the necessary information before we make uh, large decisions that impact the county budget. Um, and I also think that um, in order to um, move forward with uh, what we've heard so far, um, uh, I would um, make the recommendation that um, one commissioner uh, does everything possible to try to make uh, the meeting in person tomorrow um, to speak for the commissioners on um, our history of working together uh, with the counties uh, and our 30 year um, commitment towards one another um, and and try to build start beginning to build that goodwill. I would also say that uh, we need to start making a game plan uh, of talking and who and how we're going to address the other mayors and the other electeds in the county that have decision making that are um, are our equals in their county in their county. 
um, and that um, right now, until we get more information, um, I think the best thing we can do is work on those relationships. And um, right, and I believe, um, I guess one thing I want to add is, is we do not have a contract with um, Skagit County. We have a contract with Republic. So if we give a discount, it would be to Republic, and then Republic would be giving a discount to Skagit. I want to make sure that if we do go up there, that we we mention to them the the relationship, uh, the good relationship, the continued relationship, the damage it would cause if they changed their mind and went somewhere else, exporting their jobs, our jobs to a different state, <coughs> but also <coughs> make sure we bring up that um, if they're going to truck, if waste management is going to truck garbage to Seattle, they're actually going to be increasing the climate change that they so drastically complain about. Um, and so I have meetings tomorrow. Um, I will be able to attend this on Zoom if somebody provides me the link. Um, hopefully Steve Gilmore can provide me the link. Um, I have a meeting at 2.30, so I'll be on it before then and on it after then. Um, I think the easiest way for us to get to Skagit County is um, Commissioner Anderson, if he's willing, um, to fly his plane up there. Um, it's just uh, nothing against um, Ms. Zoller, but Mr. Anderson is more knowledge on the top, knowledgeable on the topic um, at this current time. Um, even though Lori seems to be my backup landfill person, if she's open to that. Um, I will. I will leave it up to her on on that one. I guess. Yeah, it's a, we're we have a lot of meetings and it's a busy time and that's a long, long ways. So that does help with our schedules if that can work. Okay. Um, you have a bridge meeting, Mr. Anderson. Is there a way Lori can take that bridge meeting from no, or, or mental health meeting? I've got a mental health meeting. Um, I'm trying to see if it's in person, and I'm trying to see if we can get it switched to the morning. Okay. If not, um, Lori can sit in for me on that one. Okay. Um, I won't be able to do, unless the winds change, I won't be able to do the tour in Dallasport and get oh. up there by 2.30 or by 2. Okay. Forgot about that, too. Um, I might be able to do the first meet and greet and then shoot from there for tomorrow at 10 30 because um, that I could do that likely I'll we'll figure that out in the morning we've already yeah. do what you got to do to get to schedule yeah, that's the most important that's thing. the most important thing like I said I wish I could go but I have full faith and effort that each commissioner would uh, represent click Tech County in this matter um, because after all it is a budget matter um and i think um no matter who of the three goes they will all be uh, fighting to retain um, funding for our budget so so i guess um i see that steve and jeff are online um can you get us the zoom link as well as uh, the email. personal or the the actual physical location so i can try to get there yeah, yeah, we'll get to that information here shortly. And we, we just want to say we appreciate your support and we encourage you to to do this. So we, you know, we're both vested in this together. So I appreciate that. Right. We will um, we will be active on this. Let's just put it that way. Um, we currently have some phone calls in the commissioners over there. Um, I think uh, each board member is going to be um, a little hands on on this project. Um, and, and see what we can get um, or see what we can do and we'll have future discussions um, next Tuesday, I'm sure. Great, thank you, commissioners, appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, uh, anything else for the good of the order before we sign the rest of our documents before us and head over to the FSEC meeting that we'll be at all night? I'm just wondering if, uh, Mr. Gilmore, would you get in touch with me after the meeting? Yes, sir. Thank you. After this meeting, not tomorrow's meeting. <laughs> <laughs> you want a time frame to have him call you? You're done signing, you're ready to no, go? No, I'm done. Okay. Sorry, so when we're, over, we're closed with this meeting, you're ready to roll on a phone call, got it. Um, I don't have anything other than signing documents.
Okay. Uh, with that, if there's no no uh, staff doesn't need anything from us, have any questions, any anything for the good of the order? Anybody elected officials online have anything for the good of the order? Um, seeing none. Um, with that, I would entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, I would make a motion to adjourn the regular meeting of the Board of County Commissioners, noting that we have no scheduled workshops for Thursday, April 27th, and that um, we have multiple events where two commissioners will be, potentially be present, and that has already been uh, noted in the record. Okay. Does staff think we need to note those again in the record since we're... Appreciation volunteered lunch and the Dallas Port wastewater tour that now it sounds like probably won't, but and Karen noted anyway. And Karen tonight, yeah. Oh, there you go, Weird. It's noted again. Let it be noted that the commissioners have no time off. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, we have a motion to adjourn. I will second. Okay, we have a motion to second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of adjourning say aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you, everyone for our interesting day today. It's not over. Not over. <laughs>